So I want to welcome everybody to our first of uh, two workshops we're doing on optimizing um, internal business operations for SMEs. We're really delighted to pull this um, program together. Uh, you know, as we work with so many small businesses, we've probably worked with over 400 over the last um, 12 years. And we're a small business as well, small mid-sized business. So this is an issue that we face, but we also see a lot of our clients facing this um, uh, this challenge, particularly right now. And uh, what we want to do in this session, the reason why we decided to pull it together is, first of all, we're seeing a surge of requests to get support in this area. I mean, COVID has certainly lent, um, you know, um, some, uh, you know, acceleration of this priority. But the reality is this has always been facing businesses. And what we find and what we have found, both for ourselves and our business, and we're going to we're going to make this very interactive and really share some of our experiences, try to get some other um, input from folks, um, is that what happens with technology, of course, is that, you know, there's just so many apps. There's probably an app for every possible business activity that, that um, you do in your business. We know that, we see that. And um, the reality is, is that, you know, you can go out to your, you know, get recommendations, an app for this, an app for that. And what we have found and where we're going to really focus is really thinking about technology around your business systems. What is more important in getting business and technology um, working together is to be thinking about workflow. So throughout this, and if you got the workbooks and you took a quick glance through, you can see we're going to talk a lot about process. We're going to talk a lot about workflows because ultimately to digitize your business is not just putting a whole bunch of apps on a whole bunch of individual siloed activities. To digitize your business, you really have to digitize the workflows of your business. And, um, and there's really some very foundational parts to your business that we wanna to try to find a, a way and a methodology and a methodology and approach for you to evaluate what are those core activities. Because once you get those foundational processes digitized where they should be, then you've got the people working in the areas you need to be and you can integrate other applications. And we just see this a lot, and we went through that journey too. So we really wanna share um, all of this with you and, and really give you tools and an approach and a thinking mindset of how you can plan a digitization strategy. And again, we're not gonna be focusing on the outward facing activities. There's great programs, there's really good technologies, you know, um, member management systems, CRMs, marketing, et cetera. We're not focusing on the outside, outward facing. We're focusing on your internal business operations. That's our sweet spot. That's what we've lived through. And that's what we've kind of built um, some, uh, you know, some knowledge around. So just to make sure that we're clear, we're not going to just sort of say, here's all the cool apps. We want to go through process. And, uh, and we're going to do it in two parts, as we kind of mentioned in the invite. I'm really excited to do this. It's a bit of an experiment in terms of, approach and style. We are planning on running several of these workshops and we'll certainly be looking for feedback um, afterwards. So maybe with that, I'll just let Todd um, go over what we're going to cover. Great, thanks Margo. Uh, good morning everyone. Margo, just one quick thing. I, I've actually uh, stopped seeing your uh, screen. I don't know if it's just me or... <laughs> oh, is that true for everybody? Oh, we can see the screen. Oh, oh maybe it's because you're a co-host. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm on the, uh, sorry, I just go back there, Todd. I'm just on the opening on the agenda. Okay. Sorry, for some reason I can't see it. <laughs> okay. You want me to jump in then? Uh, no, I'm just looking at myself. Yeah. Oh, I came in, came up. Okay. <laughs> sorry about, sorry about that. We always have some form of technical difficulty when you're running these. Eh? <laughs> um, so yeah, good morning, everyone. And thanks, Margo, for, uh, for the introduction. So really excited about these workshops. Uh, as Margo said, we're, we're going to run uh, uh, two of them in this, uh, in this session and we'll, we're hoping to do more in the future with the real intent of um, providing you knowledge and tools to uh, walk away with and utilize when, uh, and, and utilize with your business. 
And uh, so the agenda today in terms of the first workshop is really starting off by identifying, evaluating, prioritizing your digitization needs. What is it you need to look at, look at from an automation and technology standpoint to address your challenges? Um, building the business case. And we'll use an example of a business case that we at Business Group, a, a group have actually um, have, have implemented and done. Uh, we've done this many times with our clients as well, but for the sake of, um, of uh, privatization and, and, uh, and, we've, and we've got a big, good business case ourselves, we'll use our own and I think it's a good one and you'll uh, enjoy the example. And then building technology uh, roadmap. From a housekeeping um, standpoint, just want to let everyone know the session is recorded. Um, so just giving you a heads up on that. Uh, as we discussed before we kicked off, we did provide the workbook and some sample uh, Excel spreadsheet tools as well. So hopefully everyone did receive those. If not, they are on the event right as well. We are going to try to keep this somewhat interactive. So there will be some polling. Uh, the chat line, as you can see, is open. And so we will try to uh, uh, answer any questions that you may have and if uh, if not at that time we can park that and address it till the end we will stay on as well for an additional 10 minutes after uh, after the presentation if anyone has any questions or, or simply wants to uh, discuss anything okay. let me move forward yeah please okay. <laughs> So why is digitization a priority for a uh, small, medium-sized enterprise? Um, and it really is uh, you know, a requirement beyond this pandemic that's forced us uh, to move into this virtual world. Uh, you know, with the clients we've worked with, uh, even as little as six months ago, you know, we, we heard so many times that you know, our back office functions, our HR, our finance, they just simply need to be on, done on site. Um, and then lo and behold, as, as the climate changes and uh, the hands have been forced, uh, people have gone virtual. And uh, the automation technology has been a huge part of that. And I think a lot of clients are going to be giving us the feedback that it was just, you know, not only necessary, but so simple. And, you know, the qualities and efficiencies it brings uh, has just been unbelievable. Even for ourselves, which you'll see in the, in the business case we present. Um, and the real reasons behind it, I mean, essentially access from anywhere, uh, whether you're using SaaS, which most of the tools are now, or um, even going through desktop and VPN, it, it works seamlessly. Uh, the real-time information, everything from reporting to analytics to being able to track time is um, just so helpful. Uh, the ease of data integrations now has become uh, so simple with the applications out there and the easy integration with APIs. And then the improved workflow and processes, which you're going to see are, are critical to this and much more critical to align with before looking at technology than looking at the technology itself. And then the three ones that really um, contribute to the quality in my mind is, you know, promoting the paperless environment. Uh, we've walked into organizations where it's just filing cabinets and filing cabinets of, of financial files where, um, you know, quality and efficiency, it just, it's, it's not attainable. Um, the improved accuracy again, and then improved redundancy as well. And really what you want to do is look at the mix of what technology can take care of um, and how your people and your talent can really move the organization forward, focusing more on some of the complex processes and um, moving forward from a strategy standpoint of where can we go next. Thanks, Margaret. Okay. So um, we'll move on and we'll jump into it. So we provided everybody with um, an exercise before, um, a couple of days before to um, do a little bit of pre-work, um, just to get you into the right mindset and thinking about you know, your business processes. Um, and also all of this stuff is in your workbook. Uh, so I just kind of want to walk through this in this, uh, this section around evaluating um, you know, your needs. And really, again, for these, um, as I mentioned, there's tons of apps for each part of your business, each activity you do. Really what we want to do is, is step back and focus on your workflows for your business. And technology, really, business technology should really be designed about around your business processes and not the other way around. But often we're found, we find we're um, you know, basically a tail wagging the dog and moving into systems that work that are, are driven by the technology first. So when we look at this, we first of all just um, provided you with a couple of processes and these are a lot of this, like I said, 
as Todd said, we're drawing this from our own examples, but these processes really are very, very um, common for most um, organizations. We have the subcontractors who work with us and employees and clients. So we have a lot of ins and outs. And so there's a lot of things we deal with. But just um, the idea of brainstorming and that activity in your workbook and in the exercise of brainstorming and thinking about those business processes, it's really the first step. And we really wanted you to focus again on the internal activities. So the second step after brainstorming, and this is really um, a key step, is you start thinking about, all right, we've got those activities and processes. How do they lump together? And now what we're doing is when we start doing this is we start framing our business processes at a more macro level. And it's a really important step. So you can start saying, I have these individual activities identified, but it's all part of our delivery processes, or it might be part of our associate, or they might be your employee processes or sales operations. And, and we have, you know, a lot of these uh, that, that we went through. And really, you're starting to see how there's opportunities to lump um, these together. And both levels are key. Uh, you guys will let me know of any chats, right? Or any questions as we go along? Oops, sorry. So once we do this, the next step, and this is a really, this is a framework, it's a group, it's a way of framing and thinking about all of these processes. We did this and we found it very useful. It's an exercise and you're gonna get the theme here. There's a lot of, I'm gonna keep repeating it, around going slow to go fast. This is the step in your technology strategy where you go slow, you go deep, you be thoughtful as opposed to reacting and selecting technology. So you can see what we've done here is we've um, identified, sorry, I need my glasses so I can read my notes here. What we've really identified are some criteria that you want to evaluate each of these processes around. You know, is it high volume, low volume? Are the processes currently manual automated or are they combined? Are they routine? And what I mean by routine is that you follow the same steps every time. They don't really change. Are they repeatable? Repeatable means high, it happens weekly or monthly, like it's just a regular, a lot of the finance activities are that. Or is it a quarterly activity or low, it's more periodic. So you can see by identifying these things, what you end up you know, um, noticing is that you start seeing where your potential is around automation and where you should be focusing. And over here, constantly trying to sort of find a way of capture, capturing the inventory of um, what you currently have. So we've just put a couple in here to sort of show uh, the various um, activities. What's really interesting, what you start finding when you do this, and this is something that I'm going to, again, repeat, it's a bit of a cautionary note, and we succumb to it as well. So oftentimes you'll find there'll be a trendy tool that you know someone on your staff or you hear about a colleague or whatever saying, oh, you really need to use this. And it's a tool that's dedicated to a single activity. And what we've seen, and I recall this one business early on, it was a technology company that we worked with, and they literally, every business operation activity, they just got a subscription to a tool. And they had hundreds of these. And what happens is then you end up with a whole bunch of siloed tools that aren't really working together or integrating and you haven't actually done anything in terms of your business operations to create that efficiency. You just have a whole bunch of random rogue individual tools for certain purposes, but they're not integrating. And of course, what happens is you can very quickly find you've signed up for a whole bunch of subscription tools and you haven't actually solved your business problem, your underlying business problems. And, um, and there's a real temptation for people to uh, adopt those. And this is where I'm going to say, continue to go back to thinking about your business processes. So for us, um, you can see we had um, an area, this is what we'll focus on quite a lot, our internal business operations, we had a lot of activities going on. Um, and a lot of Excel, you'll see, which is not untypical. I think most places will find that. But this was clearly an area where there's a lot of processes. So doing this activity really helps you focus and see where things, first of all, lump together. You've got all these individual activities, but it's actually part of our business operations. So you start paying attention to, hey, is there a system that we can get that covers all of this versus all the individual systems? And that's a really good lens to put to it.
Okay. So we provided, uh, and it's again, all of this is in your workbook. Um, and you know, you can use different approaches or frameworks. I think that just the thinking about it this way is important. But what we wanted you to do is to say, okay, let's prioritize it even more. So priority one, what we wanted to do is go back and say, okay, if you've listed those things and identify them, which are the ones that hit these measures? They have high volume, they're very routine, they're highly repeatable, and they're currently using manual or combined processes. So highlighting those on green on your spreadsheet will identify the high potential. The next potential was again, high volume, not necessarily routine, but they're repeatable. And they're activities that are manual or combined processes and highlighting uh, these on um, yellow. This step is really important because this is, this is going to help give you focus. You're, again, the reality of small and mid-sized businesses, you have very limited resources. You can't throw a ton of money at technology, nor do you have people who can run these things. So your people resources, your mind share, your actual financial resources are limited. So you have to really focus on your priorities and where you're going to spend your next dollar when you think about technology. So for us, you can see what we did is we identified in sales operations, um, some activities as well as our delivery processes. Um, but again, this business operations, there was a lot of things going on here that were really high um, potential and giving us a lot of challenges. And we had a lot of different systems that we were using and some already integrated, but this step of prioritizing your activities, I think you'll find really, really helpful and a really good step. So for us, what we ended up evaluating out of that was we went back and said, okay, our highest potential, our priorities is definitely number one, this business operations, and then how we, our team can deliver it, how they are working together. And the third was some of the sales operations um, activities. So still internal business, it's sales, it's client facing, but it's the internal business activities around those clients. So I'm going to stop there. Um, if you didn't have a chance to do this, no problem at all. But we do have a poll question. Um, Leanne, are you going to present it? There we go. So you've got some options there. And if you don't mind just voting on it, and we'll just sort of see what people um, report back. I'll give you a few minutes. I don't see this real time, right, Leanne? <laughs> no. Oh, interesting. No host, so you should. OK. Yeah, we're getting some responses in. That's great. Give it maybe another 30 seconds. Right. Okay. okay. I'm going to end it in 10. Okay. Right. And I'm going to share the results. And now it's it's anonymous, everyone, just so you know. Okay. You can probably also. All right. So we see the uh, the results here. Not a big surprise. Um, this is absolutely what we're seeing, what we dealt with, but also what we're seeing in clients. They are absolutely focused on the finance operations. Recognize that it, it's got high potential for all the reasons we said. What's interesting is the information records management processes. So this is something we're also seeing and we've, we've, um, we've, we're working on ourselves as well and with some clients. The idea that people have had files and records that have existed for years and they're all over the place and now they don't just need them organized and people access, they need people to be able to use them effectively. So that information management and being able to get it into a more organized fashion are absolutely um, the high potentials. So I'll move on. Um, I am curious, and, and if anybody did this activity, um, and you can just put it in the chat if you did the activity before, um, you know, if you found it useful, um, interesting, did it kind of show anything to you that you might not have been thinking about? Um, and you can just insert it into the chat if you had some observations that we can uh, share. All right, so we'll move on. I'll close that. So Todd, you want to talk about the business case? Yeah, for sure. Um, so as mentioned at the beginning, we're actually providing a business case that, that we've done ourselves. So if we look at what we did at Business Sherpa, 
we followed the framework, a business record group, we followed the framework that, uh, that Margo has shown in the previous slides and, and used it to look at our own technology roadmap. And we did really focus on technology a lot to improve our operations and efficiency in 2019 going into 2020. So this is actually one of the processes um, or challenges we addressed in terms of the business case. We've, we've since done uh, addressed others, but, uh, but this one is an interesting one for us because it was really around uh, automating the invoicing time, time tracking and reporting. Um, as Margaret initially said, we, we went through every month the process of collecting time logs from over 100 team members uh, and then sending invoices to more than 130 clients, often closer to 150. And um, it took a lot of time. As with many, many companies, a lot of our processes and data was managed within Excel and placed in a Dropbox folder, so extremely manual. And from a resource standpoint, we were taking up uh, the time of two accounting team individuals that had to gather the invoice, work with the data, upload to QuickBooks, and then prepare all the invoices uh, through QuickBooks and then manually send out. So um, the, the whole process took, uh, was just extremely manual and time consuming. And what we did find as well is we, we always were catching errors at the end of the month. Uh, that we'd have to go back in and correct before they went out to uh, to invoice the client. Um, and just the manual check of that as well uh, created a lot of issues. It, uh, so all in all, what this would take would be four days to a full week of uh, two resources and oftentimes delaying payment from the, from the client, right, if we couldn't invoice in time. Uh, and it, it also put the stress meter up every month in the offices <laughs> the last week of invoicing. Uh, we used to always joke uh, about the, the stress in the air as, as we did all through these manual processes. I think we had to have invoicing music. Yeah, we had invoicing music. That's right. That's right. Um, so what did we do? Uh, we selected a professional services automation tool. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's essentially an ERP uh, for services-based business. And um, as you can see, we didn't just get a call from uh, a salesperson or, or Google PSAs uh, and, and sort of jump on it. We really um, went slow to go fast, as Margo often says, and took out, uh, made this a year-long process to select, plan, and implement, and used the framework that uh, Margo has been referencing. And then the big piece as well put a lot of focus and uh, priority on managing that change, uh, managing that change in the implementation uh, with the organization is huge in order for the project to be successful. So what did that result in? Uh, we couldn't be more pleased <laughs> because our timekeeping and invoicing is fully automated and uh, mobile enabled. So people can actually uh, manage their time and their invoicing through their um, the mobile. We get real-time reporting on usage and analytics, which has been great because it's so much less time spent uh, working with clients at the end of the month when they have questions around why there was an uptick in uh, effort or uh, why something wasn't done as we see all of this real time and it can address with, uh, with the employee and the uh, client real time. And it's, it saved me personally, who I manage a lot of the client uh, interaction, a huge amount of time at the end of each month. Um, and the big one for us is it automated the complete month-end process in terms of um, our log tracking, our invoice creation, and we went from four days with two uh, full-time accounting staff down to a half day with one staff member, which is which is just huge for us. As you know, from being a small, mid-sized business, uh, if you can get that level of efficiency, it's just such an impact. And again, again, you know, again, the accuracy of reports and reduced error and just the data available to us is is huge, and um, and and again, that's just our accounting staff. The hours came back in admin, and um, and um, account management time was uh, was is, is not was huge. Can we move forward? Yeah, please. Thanks. So one of the one of the one of the key priorities when you're doing this is really trying to establish the real cost. Uh, for your employee time. Like what are you actually going, what are you paying now and what are you going to save in that sense? And we have to be careful of you. You need to um, make sure you're calculating the loaded costs. So just base salary doesn't really account for the pure cost as most of you know uh, of the employee. So we always take in to account the, the benefits and the employer contribution costs, obviously the stats and the holidays. 
And then you can see this table. And we've actually included this table for your uh, access and your workbooks as well. So you, uh, you can use this for your own use. Um, and then use the fully loaded salary costs as your, as your factors. And um, we've used, uh, just for simplicity of the, of the business case, 100% utilization of our employee. That's probably not the reality. It's probably closer to 80% as, as we know people don't work a straight full eight hours every day. They need to take a break. But, uh, but yeah, just, just so you know, we've used 100% utilization in this, in this example. So then in terms of not only determining the cost, which we've done with the first spreadsheet, uh, but looking at the savings of gains uh, of what automation and technology will get you. So if you see the cost there of the 28,000, uh, which is the loaded cost of our current process, we then looked at what the new process would get us or bring us. Um, and if you look at the reduced to one staff member to half a day, we've almost cut our, um, we've cut our, our cost considerably, and that's with including the uh, technology piece. So even with the technology and salary costs, you're really hovering around half almost of, uh, of what your original cost was. Uh, the other important piece to note is your gain, right? Is um, the value gained in terms of um, if not only efficiency, but calculating that and putting a dollar value on it. Because you then have freed up your employees who are traditionally working on these uh, processes to spend their time working on more um, strategic work, looking at gaining other efficiencies for us. Uh, we've had our accountant now focused on both internal accounting and uh, supporting clients when they were traditionally caught up in, uh, in the invoice process every month. So it's been, it's been a real win for us. Mm -hmm. So, Mark. yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, I, I just want to reemphasize that point is that, you know, often, and, and the point of doing this is just to give all of you a way of thinking about it and tools and so on to help you if you're building out a business case or you want to think about it differently <clears throat> so that you really are evaluating it clearly. And, and I really think it's important that we definitely focus on the savings, the efficiency piece, but I think it's what is really important. This is the whole theme of technology plus people. Those hours gained back of that mind share is really important and there's a value to that and you should be capturing that in your business case. Um, I just thought I'd just show you, um, Sorry, Whoop. did not mean to do that. I meant to go out. Uh, just in case you have it, so uh, hopefully you're seeing that. Can you guys see the Excel spreadsheet? Yeah? And the workbook I've on my screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is the workbook that we sent in advance. So I just wanna show you that, um, again, all of this stuff is here if you haven't looked at it yet, um, that we're showing you and when you start seeing the, these are um, links, you just press the link to this editable workbook and all the stuff that we're going through right now is in an Excel spreadsheet with formulas built in there. So uh, it's not suggesting this the only way, we're just trying to give you tools that you can use that you might find helpful. Uh, manipulate them however you want. Uh, you know, use images in, in um, this, the um, workbook if that helps you in terms of, of um, getting stuff. So we'll reference these back and forth, but I just wanted to point out that they're all there and you just have to click the workbook. All right, so we'll move on. Unless there's any questions so far. I'll just go into this presentation mode. So now that you've prioritized those um, uh, you know, you're, you know what you really want to focus on. You're not going to get pulled around and yanked around into the coolest trendy things. You know what is fundamental to your business and the highest priority in terms of building out the business. Now it's about starting to make the technology roadmap. And I will say that this is one area that many organizations um, overlook. They, uh, you know, that we see this often and we did ourselves to be honest with you we just had a problem we just kind of went at it a whole bunch of ways and lots of hits and misses but why a technology roadmap is really really important um, it's that thoughtful planning that idea that you're really focusing on what's most important to your business and you're getting down to some of the foundational operational that are really going to optimize your business as opposed to just putting on a bunch of tools um, and forcing you to think about it, doing it in a phased way. You don't have all the resources, you can't turn it on. Really understanding what processes need to work in your business. So you don't want to add a technology that's going to blow up a key process. That's really important. So this lets you map it out. 
the idea of being precise and focused, you know what you want to achieve by when. So you've got a team working in this, uh, you know, really working together. You have the limited resources, of course, that idea that choose widely. I keep repeating that, of course. Um, but also, I'd say the other thing that really a roadmap helps with, it really highlights the interdependencies that happen between processes that will require integration. I don't know many, how many finance people are on the call today, but this is the bane of technology, of for, bane of, for, for finance folks with respect to technology. We see it all the time where some tool gets turned on and they've been promised by the vendor that, oh yeah, that integrates, that integrates with your financial system. And you know, it's, it's that integration promise and what they discover is they just get a whole bunch of exported flat file Excel that then have to be manipulated and uploaded into a financial system. So the poor finance person is ending up with all this extra work to try to make this fit for something that's key, which is your financial system versus really thinking about that upfront. And of course, that idea that you will, you need to be able to budget for the coming year and validate and really know what, um, you know, what is important. Uh, you know, I think that that's why a roadmap forces that thoughtfulness. And, um, you know, you really need to, to think. And if, if, as I said, if any of these things, feel free to borrow any of these slides if you're presenting the case to anyone on your team. All right, so we'll move into um, building the technology roadmap. And again, we're really focused on what is practical for a small organization. So the first step, and all of these steps are really, really important, is the idea of um, creating your process mapping. So this is where you're going to describe those core, you're gonna look at your priorities and you're going to describe step-by-step step the detailed steps that happen around that process. Um, you know, and we're gonna show a couple of approaches to this, but this process mapping is really key. It's forcing you to understand all of the intricacies and that's gonna help later with your technology selection. You're not gonna overlook these things. Once you've done that, you really want to identify, okay, when we step back and look at that, what are our real pain points? What is, what do we really need to solve? You know, if this step over here is not a pain point, you don't want a technology solving this. You want to make sure your technology solves your pain points. So just circle it. It's a very simple activity, but that thoughtfulness, I think, will make it really, really important. So in our case, um, going back to our example, these are just some of our processes. It's not all of them for sure as Todd mentioned, and that delivery process where we were trying to really, you know, understand, uh, you know, we had to assign work to a client, then we had to uh, onboard them. We wanted to, um, uh, you know, we wanted to have, give them tools and resources. We had to have that real time tracking was really important to us. And again, that led into um, quick invoicing too. Um, and that led to quality control because what we were finding by not being able to track real time progress of how someone was working, we couldn't intercept the opportunity to go to someone and say, hey, you know, you're really spending a lot more time on this. Is there something, is there an issue? Is there a problem? Can we help you from, a, from someone delivering? And then from a client being able to get in front of that as opposed to sending an invoice later and you know they've got a disconnect in expectations it was really something that was very important to us and we've definitely seen the results of that so understanding your processes and mapping them is really important after you've done that again now what we want to do and you see many instances of here of trying to sort of gather the inventory of your tools we simply you know the idea that you've got technologies that touch these activities just slap them up there what, what are you using now and and seeing those it's very easy to start capturing that um, inventory and it starts identifying all the systems that you're using and you start seeing them in a you know a broad view and you start realizing wow there's a lot going on here um, for us you know again we were showing um, you know all of these different systems on our our tools and and as i mentioned you know we definitely we definitely had our our one step forward two step back and so on so i show you some piloting tools so there were some things that were popping up and these are all great tools we're not endorsing one tool or dismissing another one they're awesome tools but again the idea of the distraction of a cool technology that was around in this case uh, uh, monday i think is a project management tool which is really great um, you know, it's really, is that showing up on the screen, by the way? I just want to make sure it's not, whoop, sorry. Um, 
you know, but we were getting distracted by those things and it wasn't actually addressing our underlying business problem. So this is a really good way of being thoughtful and thinking about your, st your processes in your business and putting on the, the technology around that. And again, I've got examples of these in the workbook F and feel free to use these or use your own methodology. I would just really encourage you to think about those core business processes that you identified as priorities and now you're really identifying them step by step by step. Okay, so we have another view. So I'm not trying to make everybody's life complicated, but this is a really interesting way to relook at everything you've done. The process steps are really important because then you won't overlap, overlook some of the key steps. We did this and you don't have to do all of these things. We would recommend you think about it two ways. One is map the processes. This is a view around looking at all of your technology inventory from a functional perspective. And the reason why this is really helpful is you're moving from the processes and now you're thinking about functionality in your business. And what you'll find is in certain areas of overall functionality, there might be several things across processes that all fit into one category. And I'll show you why this was really important for us. Um, so generally speaking, you'll see here that I've got major categories. And I'm going to say for most businesses, these are probably good enough. You might have others, but essentially you need to communicate and collaborate. Then you have front office activities, right? That's kind of the outward facing out to your clients, out to your members, etc. cetera. Um, and then the middle office are kind of your business operations activities. So kind of all the day-to-day -day routine. And then back office are the stuff that just needs to continue to crank a lot of your finance or maybe your business reporting that's ongoing and it's got its own rhythm. And, um, and so then we were able to slot all of those pieces of the processes into these categories. And that's really important because what that started to show us was that, hey, these come from several parts of our different processes, but it's our middle office. So now we can start thinking about, well, these need to integrate really well, right? They are all part of this activity. And hey, instead of thinking about an individual solution for each of these or a few of these because they're just in one process flow, now we started thinking about, as Todd mentioned, our PSA. Hey, maybe we can find a technology that covers all of these things and the integration across these were gonna be really important in the technology selection. So that's why this activity is really, really important. Um, and it lets you see things more broadly. And so for us, we were saying, okay, great. What we wanna do is we've got all these activities they are very Excel based and manual. Let's see if we can now find this PSA that's going to give us this functionality. And also the integrations that are also really key. It's not just it stays here. Now we have to figure out how to integrate with our finance systems. We need to think about our lead gen and our sales processes, how they feed in. So we worried about these integrations and selecting this technology. So we just wanted to sort of show you this and, and as a really good methodology to use to move away from siloed opportunities. Finally, um, this is in your workbook too. I'm just showing this. It's actually the exact same thing as before. Um, so you sort of saw that we looked at phase one and then maybe phase two, uh, just presenting it visually. And sometimes that's just a different way of showing it. If you need to present to someone saying, hey, we had all of these things before, and now we're going to focus on these technology priorities. And what we're going to do is find systems that catch all of this, right? That's what we're trying to do. Or we're going to use Office SharePoint Teams to catch all of that. So it's just another view that we wanted to offer to you to present um, your information. So I have another poll question that uh, Leanne's going to pop up. If you could just do a quick answer to, to this question. So what would you say is your main internal business system or tool that you think you use today? We put a couple down here. Um, you know, if it's an other, that's fine. And we can just, you can just add your, comp, your others into the chat. But if you can just vote on this. Say, what do you think currently today is probably your biggest? And we're talking about your internal business systems. So go ahead and vote. <laughs> I should have put more options.
Okay, I'll give five more seconds. Okay. Okay. So there's our results. Um, the people who put other, if you want to just put in chat what you say it is, we can't actually put, put this in the poll. I'll be just interested in it just so other people see. Um, so, and I can't see the chat, but I think the point being is that, that um, there are, I think that the main point of this question is that there are very clearly certain um, technologies that are really foundational to your business. Some of them are, might be Excel, that's not unusual, um, in which case you wanna to try to find another system. But if you've got other things that are really foundational to your business, you don't wanna forget that when you're building your technology strategy. If you're not prepared to swap it out, maybe it's not a great tool, but you wanna be thinking about that. Okay, close this out. So we'll go into this next section. Um, so once you start defining kind of those processes and you understand and you've got a roadmap, now we want to get into technology selection. And again, I'm going to warn you, this is another area where it is go slow to go fast. And so what we're going to cover off today are just these first two steps. In the second session, we're going to go into the other um, steps to go into place. And the reason why we're only doing these two steps in the last time bit of time we have, is first of all, time. I know this is a lot that of content we're sharing but also this is the spot that I'm going to urge you to spend a lot of time on really defining what you want in terms of the technology and um, you know we definitely went down a lot of rabbit holes when we were talking about that business operation systems and you know we did a stop and we went back um, and went through this process so I just again have an approach to share with you to think about. I want to introduce the concept of swim lanes. Anybody who's in technology or is a business analyst or you're an IT person or whatever are going to love that you talk about swim lanes. And it was kind of new to me. I'm a very good, strong technology systems um, implementation person. The idea that you're going to look at processes so in a different way. So, I've used our very big, hairy process we were trying to get at that business operations one, just as an example, I just want to mainly show you the elements, which is, you know, the first thing that you want to do is you really want to identify, you know, who are your key constituents around this process, who use it in some way. So for us, we had a client, we had a business solutions lead, we had a delivery team, we had business operations, and then we actually had the employer associate doing the actual delivery to a client. And by establishing these, these are going to let you establish the swim lanes. Essentially, what is the touch point each person has with respect to that process and you're mapping it out? It doesn't have to be as complex as this and it can be a very small process but it starts showing how the information flows between your team and where the dependencies are. So again, this diagram is really going into a lot of detail of showing what these processes are and, <clears throat> you know, and being able to go really into depth in each area. And this is where you really want to involve others. So if you might have a lead on your business. You want to involve your users in those different and really kind of, whiteboard this or whatever but make sure you're catching it that you're not overlooking things because one person is not going to um, get it all and it was very very good for us to do this because as we were trying to find solutions for our PSA we over focused just on one piece when we started seeing the whole thing then when we're looking at technology selection we're saying okay how are we going to maximize the coverage on all of these touch points and there's some really cool tools that you can use to take an Excel spreadsheet and convert it. I don't know how to do it myself, but Visio apparently can do that very well. Um, so again, our business uh, processes, I'm not going to go into these in a lot of detail. I just am showing this as an example of one way you can present it. But the idea that you do think about a swim lanes approach, and um, I can tell you this process for ours took us a long time. It was a year's work and we definitely had missteps. Before we did this, we went down pathways of just demoing a bunch of tools. We even thought about a development thing and um, just stepped it back and then we just stopped everything and we started going through this process. So then when we were actually focusing on that tool that we thought would give us coverage, we really had a lot of clarity on what we were going for. Um, so we stopped, 
and uh, went slow to go fast. Um, so this is going to be, uh, by the way, um, the homework that we're going to give to everybody uh, going into the next session. Is chunk, and we've got in the workbook, and we'll give you some tools on that, of thinking about our process and really mapping that out so that you've got better clarity on uh, what you need. So the next step is equally difficult. <laughs> and this is in your workbook, as well as linked into the spreadsheet that I've shared with you, just again, as a tool to help you. Um, think about how you're going to map out. The idea of catching your detailed um, needs and specifications is really, really important. So the first thing I've done in this Excel spreadsheet is I've just taken that process map that we have, we plunked it right into the spreadsheet just as a guidepost for us to make sure we're not losing sight of this process. But the hard and the difficult steps is when you're starting to define your detailed business requirements. So this is where you're taking each step and you're starting to think about what do we need it to do for our business specifically at each step? And so I have several tabs in the worksheet um, and the business requirements is the more, more detailed one. Um, the idea of having uh, I, the first tab I have down here and actually our virtual CIO that works with us did this. And I thought it was very good. The idea that put some of those guiding principles that you need to remember when you're thinking about technology selection. So it might be where the servers are if you're using a cloud-based system or that look at no matter what this has to integrate with QBO. For us it was QuickBooks Online. We weren't changing that so that integration was important. So we had a parking lot for those things. So that again is in there um, and you can just use it also for a parking lot for like future um, specifications that you might want to have. So this is a step that is um, very, very um, detailed that you want to spend time on. This can take days, it could take weeks, it could take months, depending on how big of a thing you want to do. I don't want to be intimidating, but I think the idea that you can take a process and really break it down and understand what do you need it to do. So in the spreadsheet, I've just given an example. So here in our client, it's a business process area where we had the client acquisition, they're incoming, and we're going to need them to create a business profile ultimately. So we want them to self-identify, etc. And then we said, okay, what are the actual business needs that we need in this step? What capabilities do, and what outcomes do we need at this step? And we're defining it in detail. And that way, we're able to understand that this is the business need. Do we need this as something as an essential in our selection that we cannot proceed unless we have it? Or can it be long term? So it allows you to also, again, create the roadmap and think about things you wish to have, but it's not essential for right now. And you're thinking about future technology. Someone said, you know, so these internal business systems that you are selecting, and this is really important, you're not selecting something that you're going to swap out year to year. It's not as simple as that. You need to select a technology that's going to stick with you for at least five years, probably. You don't want to take a core business system and be changing it up. So that idea that you need to know what's minimal in that product is really important. It really is, um, you know, so my CIO that works with us, and I have a project manager as well, this was a really big project. They, they went further and they wanted to number all of the business requirements. So this is for project management purposes. You don't have to do that. But the idea of the detail is important. And this is where you really need to spend time with your team and say, let's really be clear about what that is. So this is where you're inserting your vision. Looking at our time. Uh, and again, what are the musts and what is long term? So you're able to catch it all. Okay. So the last tab on the spreadsheet is systems requirements. It's a little bit of a duplication of guiding principles, but not entirely. This is where, you know, your technology people are going to ask and want to know, and you need to understand what are the actual system requirements? Do, does it have to be, uh, is it available as hosted SaaS? Or are you having, do you have to have servers on site? Most are not, but maybe it has to be installed on a Microsoft Windows operating system or Mac OS, maybe it needs both. And so those system requirements, you want to be able to catch those things, but not get distracting. So it creates a playbook for you, really, when you're thinking about it in terms of what um, you need the technology to do and select. So this is really the area where you're going to be able to insert your vision, validate it with the team, 
using this as well as your spreadsheet and your process mapping and you're going to get down to some details this is the work this is the heavy lifting that i really encourage um, organizations to really think about when you're actually doing a technology roadmap and that is absolutely going to help you with um, getting into technology selection, which we'll go into next. So we've got a final poll question that we want to ask. Um, sorry. So the question on this one is, and this is about integration. It's not about are you using Excel, but I am interested in to what degree do you have to use Excel or some other flat file export and upload, so download, upload to integrate your business systems. So if you could just vote on that question. And again, it's, it's, it's how much do you have to actually take a, a download out of one system, manipulate it and upload it into another system to create your integrations. Okay, I'll give it five more seconds. Okay, so somewhat. We didn't put any sort of real sort of numbers to that. Um, I think that this is a reality and, you know, maybe you're not going to entirely avoid that. But as you can tell from the system that we were looking at, we really wanted to try to find a way to um, eliminate as much as that as possible to really automate. We would not have gotten those efficiencies out of that business case if that Todd shared with you, if we had to continually manipulate those files to get those invoices out. We really needed that to be automated for a lot of reasons, not just efficiency, but also quality control for our clients. Okay, so I'm looking at our time. We knew that this is as far as we can get and, and uh, that's why this is a two part thing and we do want to um, move on from here. So maybe over to you, Todd, just in terms of wrap up and what we, um, what we have coming up. Yeah, thanks Margo. So um, just to recap what we wanted to cover today, I mean, again, the, the um, the intent was to really provide you with the knowledge and tools that you could utilize and go back and work through uh, the digitization strategy for your own or with your own organization and uh, really emphasize why digitization is so important now and, and we're really that's emphasized obviously by the by the climate we're in so really hoping that we you know provided you again with the tools and information to evaluate and prioritize your needs um, build the business case and the technology roadmap um, and again, this is the, the first of a two part series. So we'll, we'll look at the remaining areas of uh, the digitization process uh, and decision making in the next session, which is, which is two weeks from today. In terms of homework, and, and uh, Margot mentioned this when she was walking through the swim lane example, uh, we have provided you uh, some sample tools to create the swim lanes. Uh, and as the homework for the next session, and this can be very, very simple. Just really look at us, start small, look at one of your core process challenges and, and map that one out and, and really define the process steps. And this is so critical because again, what we find is um, we really want to get you thinking about processes, business processes over the technology first. It's, uh, and I think somebody mentioned, or it might've been Margot or I mentioned, it's so easy to get that call. Uh, when you're dealing with a process challenge internally uh, from a salesperson saying that the technology will solve all your issues um, and you jump at it only to find out it, it doesn't integrate, uh, it doesn't solve any of the um, linked issues that are causing you problems and it doesn't create any efficiencies for you. The next session um, will focus on the technology selection process. So again, continuing right from this one, uh, the resources needed the implementation plan and strategy, and then uh, a core piece, as I mentioned earlier, is really the adoption and uh, change management. It's ensuring that uh, you know your your team, your organization, is is trained, understands how to use the new uh, not only tools but uh, function within the processes and and adopt them. Okay. All right. So I think um, that um, that wraps up this session. Um, was there any um, questions that we want to go over? Um, we did share all of these resources again with you. You've got these tools in your workbook. Um, and uh, again, the goal today, I mean, all of these areas are stuff that we absolutely can assist with, um, with clients. That wasn't the goal of today's is saying, hey, you know, call us, we can help you. 
we really want you to be equipped with going through this process and, and, and giving you the tools that um, you uh, can use to do this. And again, the idea was not, we weren't just gonna be just, here's a whole bunch of cool tools, try these. Hopefully you're getting a sense of, of that ability to um, really truly <clears throat> think about your planning and make that right selection. No small business has endless resources, time, people, energy, money. So doing this well is really, really important. Um, so I'll just go back here and just, um, we are going to, um, we are going to uh, open it up to any questions that anybody has. Um, you know, this is, we wanted this to be a learning workshop that you're going away with something and knowledge that's going to elevate your own kind of confidence in doing this. Uh, and we'll be looking for feedback in terms of for format. We will be absolutely repeating these. We're going to do the two part series and we'll be repeating these under many geographies and doing again. So if you think someone else would be, uh, <clears throat> it would be valuable to them, please absolutely. We will be doing it again and we'll be looking for your feedback. You know, would, you know, we can contemplate, do we want to have breakout rooms and so on? So we can explore all of those things. But for now, um, was there any questions that anybody wanted to raise? And we will keep online for uh, 10 minutes after if anybody had just individual things that they want or others that just had more time. Um, hopefully out of that, you all got something. Um, it's stay tuned because we know there's a lot more that, go into in terms of technology selection and making implementations successful this is just planning selecting is another thing but then you got to do it and again lots of sort of rabbit holes that we went through and we'll share those and we see with clients and we want to make sure that everybody um, again walks away with some really good resources <clears throat> okay any questions that anybody has or comments that the uh want to uh, go over. That's great. Happy to share. And if there's any issues with the tools that we have shared with you and you're finding that, um, just let, just respond to either Todd, Leanne, or, or, or myself. And uh, <clears throat> we're very happy to uh, share those out. And hopefully you can, um, Hopefully you can get, um, try to do one of the process maps just to get your mindset around that. I think that if that alone, if you can walk away with this thinking about business processes before your technology, that's a win. Yeah, and again, yeah. Keep, it, keep it simple. Don't, uh, you don't have to overcomplicate your first time around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Well, we want to be true to timing. So uh, as I said, we'll stay on the line. Uh, the next session is on the 28th, um, same time of July, and, uh, and uh, we'll send out some materials in advance like we did before, and then there'll be a workbook that we'll share with more information. All right.